you will be tested. No exceptions. You know, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, I would rather eat a burning coal that burns what it burns and spares what it spares. I mean, I don't care if it does every, all the damage to me. Then say about something Allah had happened, I wish it didn't happen. Or something that Allah prevented from happening, I wish it would have taken place. Abdullah al Mas'ud continues to say in another narration, you know, a person makes a decision, business or otherwise, I'm going to get into this investment, I'm going to marry this person. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says to the angels, get in the way between my slave and this person. Because if I facilitate it for him, if I let him have it, it will admit him into the fire. He'll fall apart, he'll unravel, he'll forget me. And so he wakes up in the morning, having been now blockaded from his wishes, swearing he got struck by the evil eye, swearing bad luck, and it is nothing, Ibn Mas'ud says, but the bounty of Allah over him. Can you imagine Umm Sulaim radiallahu anha? And this hadith is as authentic, arguably as authentic as the Quran. It is in Bukhari and Muslim as the highest caliber of authenticity. This woman does not have a miscarriage. She has the baby, sees the baby, builds that relationship with the baby. The day the baby dies, she's able to bury him and hide that from her husband till she gives him dinner and he sleeps with her. And she tells him, listen, she doesn't, she's not even firm. She's keeping others firm. She's telling him, Listen, I have a question. If somebody were to lend somebody something and then ask for it back, does the second party have the right to keep it, to withhold it? He said, never, that's not right. She said, then anticipate the reward for your baby. Allah has called back what he lent you. How does somebody pull that off in 24 hours? How does a mother do that? You know, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he says, when my father, the uncle of the Prophet Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, when my father died, nothing soothed me like the statement of a Bedouin man who came to me and said, better than your father for you is your reward for him. The reward for putting up with the loss of your father. And Allah is better for your father than you are. You know Imran and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ibn Hajar said it's been confirmed that Imran and Hussein spent the last 30 years of his life in bed, not able to stand or even sit up. You know what that does to a person? physically of the sores, psychologically of depression. He says they even had to cut a hole in his bed under him, meaning to relieve himself. And this is a noble companion. This is the same companion who narrated the hadith, understandably, when the Messenger ﷺ said, pray standing if you can't and sitting, and if you can't then on your side. Imran is the one that narrated it. It applies to him and whoever is like him. Mutarrif and Al-Ala, two great scholars of the early Muslims, they said we entered when we saw when we saw Imran and Hussain, may Allah be pleased with him, we began to cry. And he told us, why are you crying? They said, well, like, we feel bad for you. Long time, man. We feel bad for your condition. He said, I will tell you something, but don't disclose it to anyone so long as I'm alive. The angels come to me and they greet me and they reassure me and I could hear their greetings. And so I knew because so much good came out of my distress that this was in fact good for me. It made me realize that. It locked me on that. And so whatever is dearer to him is dearer to me. Urwa ibn Zubayr radiallahu an was the son of Zubayr ibn Awam, right? The defender of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he traveled to Damascus, gangrene began eating and spreading in his body and they had to cut off one of his limbs. And so they gave him some intoxicant so he wouldn't feel the pain. And he said, I will never seek aid in what Allah destines on me using what Allah forbid for me. The Prophet ﷺ said, wine is not medicine. He said, just cut. So they brought the saw and they put it on his left knee and they cut. The narrator says, and he said nothing but has. That was it. He just kept saying that. And the Khalifa, Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik said, Ma ra'aytu asbara min hadha shaykh I've never seen someone with the endurance of this old man. His son, Hisham ibn Urwa, says after my father came out of that ordeal, before he heads back home, a man came to him giving him condolences. His leg has just been cut off. They put it in a basin to bury it. And he says to his leg, you know, you know that I never used you to walk to the disobedience of Allah. Look, what a mindset. And then this man comes to give him condolences in that moment. And he says to him, listen, if you're coming to feel sorry for me, I'm already awaiting the reward for this from Allah. I mean, don't mess with my head. Leave me alone. Don't feel bad for me. I don't feel bad. He said, I'm not coming about your leg. I'm coming about your son, Muhammad. He said, what about him? He said, he fell into the stable, your stable at home or where your horses were and the horses tramped on him and they killed him. And he said, Oh Allah, you've given me four limbs and only taken away one. 
and you've given me seven children or nine children and you've only taken away one. You know that, that the day you have problems, you have so many more days when things were going your way. And that the fact that we only remember the day of our problems is a skewed perspective that means that the heart was polluted. It's not the reality. Who is able to fix that for you? The way he fixed it for al Zubayr was able to get him to look with that kind of perspective. It was his commitment to Allah, the nearness of his heart to Allah. That is the only thing that can make you unbreakable. The Prophet وسلم, he told us من يريد الله به خيرا يصب منه أو يصب منه in another narration. So be patient and seek your patience through Allah and know that when Allah wishes well for a person, he afflicts him and he allows others to, meaning he gives people access to you. People are going to betray you, disappoint you, get the upper hand at times on you or something beyond people and a natural occurrence as they call it nowadays, right? These things will continue to happen whenever Allah loves a person. You know why? Because the person is either going to have his levels raised because of this or he will have his sins forgiven because of this. And those are both good. 